right in, sir. Mr. Clay is waiting for you in the library, sir. Thank you. I never shoot lawyers out of season, Mr. Martin. That's very kind of you. <laughs> You're mad, eh? I like men who get mad. Come on, have a drink. You hunt much? Some. That's a big speed special, custom made for me. How about that telescopic sight, hmm? Huh? Four power, not bad. No, oh, you've hunted. Hey, uh, Martini on the rocks, ten to one and no olive, right? How'd you know? I know a lot about you, Paul, right down to the cheap vermouth you use. How come you buy expensive booze and then use cheap vermouth? Ten to one, who can tell the difference? Yeah. Well, you're practical. That's one of the reasons I sent for you. There are many fine attorneys in Oklahoma, Mr. Clay. Why did you send for one from New York? Because we've never met. No one will ever suspect that you know me. You're being very careful. When you're dealing with $30 million, you've got to be careful. Where do I fit in? I want you to investigate some people. I'm a lawyer, not a detective. I don't want a detective. A detective looks like a detective. Well, what do I look like? You look like a man who graduated second from the top of his class in Columbia Law School in 1942. In the OSS, General Spelton wouldn't even go to the bathroom without consulting you first. On top of that, you're honest. Well... You know so much about me, why don't you hire the investigator who investigated me? Because I had to tell him what to do. I need a man with initiative. Mr. Clay, I don't think I'm in... I want you! Don't yell at me! I'll yell all I want, I'll do what I want, I'm dying! Doctors, give me six months, maybe a year. I'm sorry, Mr. Clay. No, you're not. You don't even know me. Well, I'm beginning to. Doctor said I shouldn't drink. Well, it's my hospital. I drink all I want. Thirty million. It's a lot of dollars. Wasn't easy come by. I want to make sure it gets into the right hands. Just exactly what is it you want me to do? I want you to find out if I have any real friends in this world. To leave your fortune to? That's right. Real friends that... Like me, for me, not for the money. What about your family? I don't have any family. They're all dead. I'm sorry. You what? I said I'm sorry. No, you're not sorry. Are you do being any... polite. Why don't you loosen your tie? You look uncomfortable. Uncomfortable? I've got friends, Mr. Clay. Uh, how do you know? How do you, how do you really know? Well, I guess it's different when you don't have $30 million. Uh -huh. That's the point, sir. That's really the point. <laughs> Not allowed to smoke these. You see, Paul, there are five people in this world that I'm close to, and I think they care for me. They write me, they send me presents, they telephone. Well, why do you doubt them? Because you know as well as I do, you don't pile up 30 million bucks in this world without stepping on somebody. Sure, they, they say they forgive you, but how do you know? I doubt if anyone ever can be sure. When you're as rich as I am, you got a right to know. Come here. You see, I've done the charity bit. Now the rest of my money goes into a fund that is to be equally divided amongst those friends whom you tell me are honest in their feelings to me. Now don't forget, you have the power to set up five people for life. And if you tell me that I haven't got a friend in a lot, then none of them get anything. Not one stinking penny. It's an unusual request. But well, I guess when a man has $30 million, he can afford to be different. By the way, how much of that do I get? Your fee's 25000 75000 What are you really after? Well, we both know I'm going to get. Okay, 50000 Here are their names and addresses. I don't want them to know who you are or that you know Vernon Clay. They won't. And then not to know that I'm dying, right? Right. Goodbye, Mr. Clay. When do I hear from you? Well, I'm finished. Oh, Paul. Huh? Don't forget. I'm in a hurry. Now, 
Oh, Hilda, I figure I'll be home about six o'clock. Yeah. Unless I get busy. Well, if I have a customer, the roast will have to wait. Yeah. When I have one, I'll be back. Yes, good afternoon. Can I help you? Well, yes, I w I'm going hunting next week, and I was looking for a jacket. I, I heard that Swanson's was the place to come to. Well, that's my reputation, yes, yes. The quality's high, and the prices are low. Uh, yeah, well, you look like a... No, well, I'd say a for two. I feel like one, too. What? Uh, you've got a good eye. Oh, well, a tailor needs a good eye. And that's another thing you get at Swanson's. I do the alterations myself. Well, that's a personal touch. Should be good for business. Yeah, well, who wants to pay good money for the kind of help you get today? You know, they're not workers. They're coffee breakers. <laughs> I say, you must have paid plenty for this. I, uh, really don't remember. I think I got in Tulsa. Tulsa? I used to work as a tailor in a little town near Tulsa. Yes, it's called a Clayville now. Never heard of it. Well, it was named after Vernon Clay. You must have heard of him. I don't think so. Oh, he's a big oil man. Do you know how much he's worth? No, do you? <laughs> You'd be surprised how much I know about Vernon Clay. He's only my children's godfather. Oh, nice family. Yeah, well, it was taken about a year ago. Children are bigger now. Mm -hmm. um, well, now we see here. Now, oh, here he is. Let's try this one on it. This is nice. Uh, you want to come down to the mirror, Henry? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, that's, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was made for you, yes. Yes, it's very comfortable, yes. Yeah, that's right. You can wear that kind of a coat, too, of you. Thank you. Uh, oh, I, I think maybe the sleeves are a little bit... Yeah, yes, yes. Well, I'll let them out about an inch and a half. I'd say two inches. Two yeah. inches, yes. Uh, two inches, I think, would be enough, yes. All right. Well, I can have this coat ready for you tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. well, that'd be fine. Fine. Thank you. Yes, if you'll enjoy this coat, yes. That'll be $65. Uh, precious these days, huh? Well, it's only money. You've got to spend it, you know, to enjoy it. Tell me, do you miss Oklahoma? Oh, no, I've been here in Tucson too long now. Mm hmm Well, that is a nice family. You don't know a family who'd like to have a photograph taken, do you? A photograph? Yes, I'm a photographer, and I'm opening up a new studio here in town, and I thought a family photograph in the window might be good for business. Well, no, thank you. I have a family photograph. <laughs> but this would be free. Oh, free? Now, why should we pull as a family? Yeah, well, I thought we would move the couch over there under the fish I had mounted. We could make... We'll take it under Uncle Vernon's portrait. Of course, under the portrait. Oh, is that Uncle Vernon? Yes. My son Vernon was named after his godfather. That's because he's rich. Vernon? I was named after Daddy. Come on, children, come on. You know, my name is Eugene, and I, I wanted to name my boy Eugene, but... Uh, we decided on Vernon. Oh, sounds like a very nice man. Well, he's the kind of a My man... My husband wouldn't be alive today if it weren't for Vernon. Oh, what happened? Well, years ago when I was in Oklahoma, I was sick, and the doctor said I needed a dry climate. So he sent me out here, and it didn't cost me a penny. Oh, sounds like a very generous man. He's the most generous man you'll ever meet. Uncle Vernon's a millionaire, and someday... Vernon! Now, you behave yourself. Don't yell at the child. Uh, Mr. Swanson, would you mind changing places with your son? You know, when Mr. Clay first started out, uh, he used to sleep at my tailor shop. Isn't that right, Hilda? And he never forgot it. That's why he helped me when I was sick. No wonder you're so fond of him. And when Eugene got well, Mr. Clay sent me out here with the money to buy our store. And on top of that, all those months when I was in the hospital, Mr. Clay, no matter how busy he was, he still found time to visit Hilda. How nice. Well, now, let's get this picture made, because the children are getting restless. Everybody smile for Uncle Vernon. One, two, three. All right, children, bedtime. Come on, come on. Yes, too bad we couldn't take the picture under the fish I had mounted. It's perfectly understandable why your wife wanted it here. After all, Mr. Clay has been so good to you. Now, don't forget to brush your teeth. Yes, Mommy. Yes, Mommy. And when you say your prayers, don't forget to bless Uncle Vernon. Uncle Vernon. Uncle Vernon, it's always Uncle Vernon. It's never God bless... <coughs> Uncle Vernon. Uncle Vernon. Leave it. 
Leave it there, Mr. Swanson. Now stand up. Stand up, Mr. Swanson. You're taller than he is now, aren't you? You know, a man never knows how tall he is until he learns how to stand up. Hilda. Hilda! 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 Who do you think you're yelling at? I'm yelling at my wife! Are you out of your mind? Not anymore! And you listen to me, Hilda. From now on, I want my kids to say, God bless Papa! Phillips registered here. Yes, sir. Room 304. Thank you. Shall I announce her? No, she's expecting me. Pick a floor, any floor. You're a claustrophobia. How about a little information? Man, you are talking to the bard of Miami Beach. Do you know Miss Phillips? Irene Phillips? You know, I dig television, man. Uh, my favorite show is The Price is Right. Mm. Well, you're breaking my heart, but I think I get the message. How do you know her? Like my mother. What do you want to know? What time does she come down? Oh, she's night people, man. Not till the sun fades. Hmm. Where's your roost? The uh, bar Samoa, just around the corner. She digs the action there every night. And I repeat, every night. Roger. Bar Samoa. Willie Burns speaking. Who? Mr. Biddle of the district attorney's office. Tell me, Mr. Burns, have you taken in any counterfeit $20 bills recently? No, no. Why? Well, a lot of the bars in your neighborhood have been hit with bad paper. Well, gee, thanks. Well, we'd like to plant a man from our office behind your bar tonight. Yeah, yeah, anything. Send him down. Tell him to ask for Willie. Thanks a lot, Mr. Burns. You're a good citizen. Mr. Martin will be there on 6. Whiskey soda in the sidecar. Whiskey soda in the sidecar. Okay. Evening, Frankie. Hi, Irene. Good evening. And you? Yes, my name is Paul. Change, Frankie. Now, if you should drink? Yes, a tall glass of water. There you are. Thank you. Water. Always before the phone call. Then what? Stingers, a barrel full. Oh, one of those, huh? Too bad, nice little lady. <laughs> You'd never make a bartender, pal. I didn't know cops are so soft. Oh, cops, bartenders, what's the difference? People are people. You're not gonna cry, are you? Never cry. Might bleed a little, but I never cry. Hello? Hello, Vernon? How are you? Well, I, I, wait a minute, wait a minute. They want their money. Yes. What? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm calling from the drugstore. Oh, now, please don't start worrying, dear. I'm just getting a prescription pill for my migraine, so stop worrying. Oh, yes. Yes, I got it. But you really shouldn't have done it. At my age, I'd like to forget about birthdays. <laughs> what? Oh, don't scold me. I don't consider calling you an extravagant. Did you get the sweater? But I like to knit. It gives me something to do at night. All right, darling. I'll call you again in a few days. Hmm? Bye. Oh, heavens. Oh, I'm going to like you. Oh. You're new. Yes, and my name's still Paul. Oh, yes, you told me. I'm sorry. I always get very confused when I'm on water. 
Why don't you just order a stinger in the first place? They don't go so good with long-distance phone calls. Oh, I see. A husband who doesn't approve of... Uh... He's not my husband. Should have been, but he's not. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be personal. I just thought you were married. <laughs> Frankie, did you hear that? He thought I was married. Fred. Oh, uh, Paul. Oh, oh, yes, Paul. Paul. Paul, I've had four husbands. You're cute. Have a drink on me. Thank you. <sighs> yes, I've been... Mrs. Frederick, Mrs. Phillips, Mrs. Davis, and... <laughs> oh, I've even been Mrs. Chippewise. <laughs> what about, uh... Uh, Miss Doyle, well, uh, uh... But, Fred, I came this close. No, no, I... I came this close. How tall is a five-year-old boy? Depends on the boy. Well, a lot depends on this boy. Hmm? No, it's okay. It's okay. I told Vern the boy would learn to love me. Vern? Vern who? <laughs> None of your business. That's something I never talk about and I'm not about to because I never get that drunk. <laughs> What do you have to do around here to get a drink? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. You're a cute Fred. The oh, Paul. Oh, yes. Why, why not keep calling you Fred? Oh! <laughs> I know, Freddy Chippewas. <laughs> do I look like him? Oh, nobody looks like him. <laughs> Do you, do you know what he said to me? Who? Double away? No, no, Vern. When his wife died, the boy told him he didn't want a new mother. What did Vern think about that? Oh, oh, he, he said he loved me, and he did too. He was, he was going to divorce her and marry me until she... She loused everything up and went over the cliff. She what? I, I... I... I don't think she knew about it. An accident, huh? Of course it was an accident. She... she didn't know anything about us, but... I was... I wasn't gonna wait around till this conscience cleared up. I cleared out. I wasn't gonna waste my youth. But you're still very fond of Vern. Oh, 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 we're very friendly. Oh, yeah. He, you, you know, he's a very rich man. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Maybe he'll leave you something in his will. Oh, listen, Fred, now, now let me tell you about that. Mm -hmm. That's okay, it's okay. We don't get sore. It's not my fault they're not coming in. Frankie, did I ever tell you I nearly married Vern? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He doesn't believe me. Well, after all you've been through, you certainly should be remembered as well. <sighs> Man, Frank, you should believe me. Because when I'm drinking, that that that's when I tell the truth. That that's why I only drink water when I'm calling him. I I I, I would never want to say the wrong thing. You wouldn't want him to know that you still love him. There's only one thing I love. Money. Money. And someday he's going to leave me plenty. Yeah. I certainly hope he does, Irene. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, I, uh... I hope this clay fellow leaves you a bundle. Who, who, who did you say? Oh, this fellow even telling me about Vernon Clay. I I never said his name up once. I, I never do. A lady, I'm not a mind reader. You told me all about him. No, 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 I, I couldn't have. I... What did I tell you? 
Well, you told me all about Vernon Clay, what a big man he was, about Clayville, about how he owns the hospital, university, big house for servants. Even about this man Swanson, who let him sleep in his back room until he got started. No. 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 I, I, I don't remember saying anything like that. Well, it's really nothing to get concerned about. One never knows what one says when they're on the juice. Oh, I, I, I've always been able to handle this. Now, now Paul, I've been drinking Lady, for... how many times do I have to tell you my name is not Paul, it's Fred? Oh, no. What happened? Frankie, I don't think you'll be seeing her anymore. You kidding? She turned down a drink. Well, I don't mean she's quitting. Want to bet? We're going to have to work very hard on your putting game. By that, I mean we're going to have to concentrate a little more on your putting game. You see, we have to concentrate a little more up here in order to putt down there, you see? What am I doing wrong, Mr. Higgins? Oh, not Mr. Higgins. Putt-putt. Just call me putt-putt. Everybody does. They don't call me putt-putt because I scoot around the golf course like a little motorboat, no sereni. They call me putt-putt because I happen to be the greatest little putter in the world, if I say so myself, and I don't lie. <laughs> now, you mind if I try? Not at all. Watch this, now. <clears throat> Just like it had eyes, huh, Mr. Martin? A master class. Go right ahead, sir. You try it. Oh, I couldn't sink a ten-foot putt if that hole were as big as an oil well. Oil well? Don't knock oil wells, Mr. Martin. They put me in business. Oh, you in oil? No, but my partner is. And he was as bad at this game as you are until I got a hold of him. I got him the right set of clubs, the right putter. If you don't have the right putter, it's like having an ugly wife. She's yours, but you don't win any prizes with her. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 now, give it a little try. Give it a... <laughs> right now. Go ahead. Uh, suppose you could find the right wife for me like you did for your partner? No, no, he isn't married. She passed away. Oh, you mean a putter? Mm. Oh, of course. Well, never let it be said that old Putt Putt would hustle any one of his customers. No, sir, Rainey, Mr. Martin. If you want some new equipment, you step right into old Putt Putt's little, little shop over here. I'll give you something that you're going to say bravo, bravo with. I think you need something with a light head. Oh, excuse me. Hello, Putt Putt's Mortuary. Dig a divot and jump in. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. I got, my, I got my book right here, Bobby. I could take you uh, at 3 o'clock. I'll give you a lesson at 3 o'clock, okay? Good. Now, listen, Bobby. Uh, Harold was over this morning. He said that all you guys went bowling last night. How come he didn't call me? Yeah, sure. Sure, I took my phone off the hook. Thanks a lot, pal. Thanks! Crazy guys. They think all I got to do is think about bowling. Now, uh, Mr. Martin, I think that you're going to enjoy this club because uh, this is going to make me, it uh, quite like a... Huh? Is that, uh, your partner? Uh, oh, uh, my partner? Yes, that's, that's him. Well, he's not exactly my partner. But I guess a guy should be grateful. After all, he put up all the loot for this place. <laughs> How'd he come to do that? Because he's a wonderful man. I mean, he writes me and I write him. We phone each other. I phone him. He phones me. Just because he's got a lot of money, that doesn't necessarily mean that a guy's a rat, you know. Well, I shouldn't think so. You should just like each other as people. Yeah, that's what we do. We like each other just as people. <laughs> Vern likes me, you know, because I clown around a lot and he laughs. Well, you know, sometimes in life, it's really the fellow you're going to have fun with that counts. Uh-huh. But plus, you just made yourself a sale. Good. I think you'll enjoy that club, too, Mr. Martin. I just want to get the number on it so I can get the sales tax. Excuse me, would you please? Well, Tom, how are the kinks on the links? That rhymes. Stinks, too. Got some balls I want to sell. They're in pretty good shape. Pretty good shape. They look like meatballs. I'll give you 50 cents for the whole pack. They're worth at least three bucks. Three bucks? Only to the guy whose bag you stole them out of, pal, not me. That's pretty funny coming from you, putt-putt. At least I'm still allowed to caddy. 
Yeah, you're still allowed to caddy because that's all you're ever going to be is a caddy. You're nothing but a liar. Oh, hey, Mr. Martin. Look at they framed me beautifully. Framed you? Yeah, well, you know, I was caddying for Vern at the country club, and he was tipping me very big, and all the other caddies, they got jealous because he was tipping me so big, and, and they wouldn't let me caddy at the club anymore. So Vern set me up in this business here. Well, Vern got mad because he heard that they were telling all these dirty lies about both of us, you know? Mr. Martin, look at this man. Look at this picture. Is that the picture of a man who would cheat at golf? Is that the picture of a man who'd ask me to turn in a phony golf score so he could win a trophy? Well, he's got ashtrays that are worth more than all the trophies put end to end. You know, some days you have it and some days you don't have it. I mean, some one day you're liable to shoot a 90, another day you're liable to shoot a 70. I mean, so he had a lucky day. It happens every once in a while, you know. Oh, well, who cares about that old country club anyway? I haven't thought about it for six years. You know what I'm going to do, Mr. Martin? You know what I'm going to do? One day I'm going to buy that club. And I'm going to fire every one of those lying caddies. I'm going to say, out, lying caddies, get out. I admire positive thinking, but isn't that going to cost an awful lot of money? No, oh, I'll get it. When? Real soon, I hope. I've earned it. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? When, if I really get the club, forget about what I said before. You know what I'm really going to do? I'm not going to make Tom that creep be my caddy. I'm going to set him up in a business just like this. Yeah. And then I'm going to put my picture on the wall so that he has to look at it every day, Arini. That's what I'm going to do, Arini. You know, Putt Putt, I think you better sell me another one of these. Huh? Another one? Yeah, I got a friend, Charlie Smith, back in Denver. Can't stand him, but I think I better bring him a putter. You can't stand him, but you're going to take him a putter? Well, if I don't, he'll steal mine. What can you do about a guy like Charlie? He uh, cheats at gin, tries to date my girl when I'm out of the city, signs my name to tabs, and... You mean he does this, and you say he's your buddy? Sounds like a creep to me. No, 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 not Charlie. Creep's the kind of fellow who does things and won't admit it. Old Charlie does something, you call him on it. He admits it. You can't stay angry at a fellow like that. You mean you can't stay mad at a fellow who makes a mistake and cheats a little? Not for long. Not if he admits it. Tells the truth. Hey, Putt Putt. Yeah? Here. Give me my money. Well, that's three bucks. Well, sorry. Been the same balls I've run in before. Yeah, I know. Well, I just didn't look at them good the first time you brought them. They're much better grade ball than when I... Look, it, the reason I got steamed up was because you told everybody that I lied about Mr. Clay's score. You know how mad a guy can get he, when he knows that he's wrong? And look, you, Tom, you can't stay mad at a guy forever if, if he makes a mistake and cheats a little. Hey, Putt Putt. Yeah. Why don't you come on over to the club Monday morning? We'll play a little golf with the caddies. Monday? Uh, Tom, I don't know whether I could do it Monday or not because. Anytime. Monday's. Should be great Monday. I, I, I'd like to very much. Sure, you bet I'll be there Monday. Swell. I, I'll, I'll come. Yeah, you, you tell everybody that I'll, I'll be there. I'll give you a lesson, too. You tell the whole gang that, that old putt putt will be there, Arini, all right? Arini? <laughs>
That was one of your biggest hits, wasn't it, Miss Brent? My biggest? And my first. I remember it was number one on our magazine poll for months. Tell me, how did you develop that unique style of yours? I didn't. It just happened. Excuse me. Hello, Virginia. Did my call come through yet? Oh. Well, please let me know. I'm sorry. Your uh, style just happened? That's right. I was working in a small club in Chicago. I was pretty bad. Well, we don't have to mention that. Well, why not? It's true. Mm, handsome fellow. His name is Donald Cray. He was in the army when we fell in love. Lucky fellow. He's dead. I'm sorry. That's when I started singing again. I mean, really singing from the heart. War casually? No, his father killed him. Excuse me. Virginia, how about my call? Well, will you please keep trying? You know I have to leave. I'm sorry. What time is it? Oh, it's uh, 2.30. Well, this won't take very long with it. I have a recording date. No, well, there are just a couple of other things I'd like to find out about. Where were we? Uh, we were talking about uh, Donald's father. Oh, yes. Poor man. I hope he's forgiven himself. I have. He didn't really mean to kill Donald. You really think he killed his own son? No, not deliberately. It was the telegram that did it. When he heard that Donald and they were going to get married, he wired Donald to come home. He said he was very sick. Donald was driving too fast and it was raining. And you hold no malice for his father? I did at first. But when I saw him at the funeral, I realized he'd been punished enough. To this day, I've never mentioned the telegram or that I knew he wasn't really sick. You're a very compassionate woman, Miss Brent. How could I hate anyone who loved Donald? Excuse me? Virginia? Oh, wonderful, put him on. Hello, Mr. Curry. How are you, dear? Oh, I'm just fine. I've been rehearsing a song. Mm -hmm. I'm going to record it this afternoon. And I'm going to send you the very first copy. How are you doing out there? You know I worry about you. Oh, you know what happened today? A man came to interview me from a fan magazine. Uh-huh. Oh, no, please don't worry, Mr. Clay. I told him that you didn't really mean to kill Donald. Unfortunate, isn't it? Yes, is she always like that, Doctor? Oh, she has lucid days. Comes out of it completely sometimes. But not for too long. Any hope? Oh, yes. Yes, there's always hope. All we have to do is to find the right key. Could be a word, a memory, a person, sudden shock. Or someone she loves. Well, that's hard to say. Love and hatred are so mixed up in her mind. Hmm. Well, she's got a lot of company. Afraid so. You ever hunted here before, Mr. Martin? No, this is my first time for elk. The reason I wondered was in your wire you requested Judd Rogers for your guide. Well, some friends of mine recommended him. I hope he doesn't mind a novice. Oh, no, Judd's very good with beginners. You'll be real safe with Judd. That's the way I want it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Judd. Judd, this is Mr. Martin. Hi, Mr. Martin. Hi, Judd. I got you a real strong pack horse to cart home your elk. Well, thanks for the compliment, but I'm a beginner. I can see that by the new jacket. <laughs> Don't worry, when it comes to how smart in these elk, we're all beginners. I thought I'd take him over to the south side of the lake. They've been feeding pretty good over there. Sounds like a good spot. Those stirrups comfortable? Nothing's comfortable. I don't like horses either. <laughs> See you later, Mr. Big. So oh, hello. Good luck. Want coffee? Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, that's pretty good. Want some more? No, thanks. Aren't you eating anything? No, I drink my lunch. Breakfast, too. If hadn't gone earlier, you must have a lot on your mind. No, I... Oh! No, this isn't liquor. It's my own mixture. Goat's milk, safflower oil, wheat germ, honey, and raw egg. But it doesn't explode? No. <laughs> no, sir, no booze for me. One in a family was enough. I suppose there's one in every family. It wasn't always that way. Money did it. Usually does. My dad never touched a drop till he was past 40. My dad was a great guy. He just couldn't cope with the rat race out there. That's why I like it here. No, sir. Won't catch me chasing the dollar. It's gonna chase me. How are you gonna arrange that? It's already arranged. While the time is working for me. Did Dad leave you a trust fund? He left me nothing. I'm talking about my adopted dad. My uncle. The big oil man. His son died. He lost a son. I lost a father. We kind of adopted each other. Sounds like a nice man. You ruined my father's life. Your uncle? My uncle. When I was just a kid, my dad invented a new oil drill and sold it to him. He thought $25,000 was a lot of money. It is. What that drill made my uncle, my dad should have gotten at least a million. He brooded about it till the day he died. None of my business, Judd. But if that's the way you feel about your uncle, why are you so close to him? It isn't him I want to be close to. It's his money. My father's money. Let's go get you an elk. Oh, I think I've had it today. Now, nah, don't give up so easy. It's a pretty good spot, the other side of the lake. I couldn't hit an elk in a cage. Maybe you'll have better luck with my gun. It's got a pretty good sight. Try it. I don't think even a Bixby special would help me. Okay. You're the boss. Hey, isn't the lodge the other way? All you hunters have a bad sense of direction. I know where I'm going. Hey, Judd. Sure you know where you're going? I know where you're going. Get off. Hey, what is this? Move. All right, who are you? Well, what is this? He sent you, didn't he? What do you mean, he? I mean my uncle. I don't know what you're talking about. Vernon Clay. Judd, will you please put that gun down? You mean this Bixby special, Mr. Martin? That's what you called it, didn't you? How much is he paying you to spy on me? Nobody's paying me anything to... You know why they call this a Bixby special, Mr. Martin? Bixby's my middle name. I made this gun. And there's only one other like it in the whole world. The one I made for my adopted father. Judd, would you please... And the only place you could have seen it is in his house. That's why I know Vernon Clay sent you. He's going to be very disappointed. When he finds out his spy became a hunting accident. Spy? I hate to put a hole in that nice new jacket. Judd, look, you, you mean you want to kill me just because a fellow named Swanson showed me a gun like that? Swanson? What Swanson? He runs a men's clothing store in Tucson. Tucson? What's he look like? Like a middle-aged Swede. You mean Swanson showed you a gun like this? He had it hanging on his wall. They call it the Bixby Special. How did Swanson get a hold of my gun? He told me his kid's godfather gave it to him. Vern gave my gun to Swanson? Took me months to make another gun like this. He loved that gun. Why would he give it to that lousy tailor? I'm his son. You think it's been easy playing up to him all these years? To the man who killed my father? That money's mine. It's all mine and nobody's going to take it away from me. Judd, you don't want to kill me? That's not you behind that gun. That's some mixed up kid trying to repay a debt for his father. Now your sentiments may be all right, but I don't think your dad would want to pass his grief on to you. 
You've got a whole lifetime ahead of you. Don't let your hatred for Vernon Clay ruin it for you. Let's go miss another elk. Good evening, Mr. Martin. back last week. Well, I had a little thinking to do. I hope Mr. Clay will forgive me. Mr. Clay passed away. The funeral is to be tomorrow. What? We tried to contact you, but you were en route. He's named you as his executor. Your fee. Presumptive heirs are all here. Here? In the library. I wired them about Mr. Clay's death, and they flew in for the funeral. They came here for the funeral? They know absolutely nothing about what you've been doing. Yes, I know. Have you made your decision? I think I'd like to be alone for a moment, if I may. Certainly. I'll be waiting on the veranda. Mr. Clay, I'm sorry I didn't get back in time. But I'll say one thing for you. When you give a fellow a job, it certainly is a butte. He had a way of making people talk to themselves. I suppose it was because one really never could talk to him. Haven't we met someone before? It's quite possible. I'm Paul Martin. I'm Jerry Brandt. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, I wanted to look at him once more and see him. See what, Miss Brent? If I were really free. So long, I wasn't sure how I felt or who I was. Till the telegram arrived saying he was dead. I've been imprisoned with my hatred for him. I have the courage to admit that now. You still hate him? No, I don't blame him anymore. I just want to think of him as Donald's father and try to love him for that. And besides, he couldn't have taken possession of my life if I hadn't allowed it. Miss Brent? There are five other people in the library there who feel exactly as you do. I think I'd like to go and talk to them. Please do. Will I see you again, Mr. Martin? You certainly will, Miss Brent. Mr. Clay, they all started out by giving you their love and you hung a price tag on their affection. No wonder they ended up resenting you. And according to that, they won't get anything. But after all those years of Vernon Clay, they must be entitled to something. And you know what, Mr. Clay, I'm going to give it to them. I'm going to give them your $30 million. Oh, I just remembered something. These people in here didn't come to collect your money. 
I came to your funeral. If you really do have five friends after all. Oh, excuse me. Six. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us. Look forward to seeing you again next week. Good night.